Welcome back to the channel guys. Welcome to another stream and welcome to another video and yet another episode working on these two guys right over here. That is the Tamiya F4 Phantom and the Academy F4 Phantom. We're building the, the Tamiya one just into the Korean one. So Did you enjoy the videos on painting? I hope you did because they were long and tedious and yeah <laughs> we got lots of lots of painting done over two hours three hours total even more than that because the tail fins the tail fins on the Tamiya kit had to be I had to strip all the paint off and start from scratch on these two on this particular piece. Um, after I got the color done on them, I sprayed my um, semi gloss to seal it all in. Um, sealed it all in, and it reacted with the color and really made it blotchy and lightened it up and. I don't know why it didn't do it on any other part of the kit, but it did on the on the on the elevators. So I had to strip it all off and start again. And so that took me a total time just to repaint these was about three hours. So yeah, that was what I did yesterday. So I just worked on these yesterday, and that's it. Um, yeah, you guys want to see the finished product of the, the Korean one? It's got the brown and both greens, okay? You guys saw me do the brown, you saw me do the green, or at least the lighter green, okay? Well, I did the exact same thing and I painted the dark green, okay? In hindsight, I probably should have done the dark green first. I would have had to do the light green a little bit more and have to do more coats to get it to change the color that I wanted but nevertheless this is what we got and I got a couple of little blotches on here looks like fingerprints where the paint isn't all that great but whatever so we can finally get to some assembly because that's kind of what we have been holding off on this whole time right um, so I want to put some of these pieces together here. We have, going back to our Tamiya kit, if we back up a little bit, we back up to the point where we put in the intakes on, okay, got those all assembled and put in the plane. We assembled the rear fins. Did I actually put all of my parts together on these? Yes, I did, it is assembled. I did, in my little adventure yesterday repainting this, I did wind up breaking these in half. Um, when I pulled the tape off, the tape stuck, and as I pulled, it broke the thing in half. So this has actually been re-glued together um, as one piece, as Tamiya intended, and uh, I'm hoping it stays together. Once it's all actually assembled, it's not gonna be a problem. But as it sits like now, I feel like it might be a little delicate. Anyway. So that's done, those pieces. Moving on to the next page, we had to assemble this little baby and get that all done. And now, excuse me, now we can kind of assemble these two pieces. Um, this will sit on the plane like that, which means this is gonna sit like this. So press this down on there. And if I've got my angles all right, this should just sit back in there. If it breaks in half again, I don't care. It's what it is. Um, that's what I get for playing with it too much. But it should kind of nestle down in there nicely. That looks pretty good like that. Looks like that's settled in. 
it is a little tight against the side here. I don't know how much rotation it's supposed to afford, but that looks like it's going to be about level if I nizzle it like that. Okay, so there we go. That's assembled. Now we can put this on the plane itself. Now what they want, we need to... No, 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 what? I'm skipping ahead. Is this step first, then go over to this. I'll change the camera for you so you can see a little better. You don't have to stare at my face so much. Okay, so we start with this, and you see the arrow here. We're going to go to this next, putting these two little guys on. Okay, I haven't got those painted. I don't have them out ready yet. So, let's test fit this. <laughs> Seems to just drop into place like it belongs there. Which, of course, is a beautiful thing. The back has a bit of a lip on it. So I'm just trying to make sure... I actually have the tail fin in place where it belongs. It doesn't seem to... I might just have to live with that. A little bit of a lip right there. That's okay. Not sure what is causing that. I don't know if it's my tail fin causing it. Let's let's take that off. Drop this in. Does it have that lip even without them? That'll be a test. No, it doesn't. So, like this, it's perfect. So it's obviously my tail fin situation causing something there. Let's get this down in there. Something about my tail fin is causing that to... Oh, now it sits flush. Okay, just something I had wrong the first time. That's alright. Let's glue this together. I realize my glue is gonna mess with the the silver paint because I haven't sealed it or anything. That's all right. That's what touching up is all about. And also, I'm gonna have all kinds of soot and stuff to deal with. So there we go. Our tail fins are on. Finally. Finally, after all this time. Now we've got a couple of pieces um, off of our B tree, B19 and 20. Let me grab my stuff off of our B tree. Okay, that's going to be these two guys here, and we need to paint those light gunmetal. So, I'm going to hit those with this stuff real quick. Okay, bear with me here. really no problem I might just do another one so let's just put that aside there mega boy how you doing faithful little mega boy what do you say hey I can I can subscribe to you and not just follow oh that's right yes 
because I'm now an affiliate on Twitch, you can actually subscribe to my channel on Twitch and uh, not just follow. So we're going to let that dry for a minute or two. Next thing we have the arrestor hook and that's off of our Q tree, Q9 and 10. And so I'm going to assemble those and then I'm going to paint them. They've got to be dark gunmetal. Where's my Q tree? That's going to be mixed around with some other stuff. This is Q. So there we go. There's our two pieces. I'm surprised Tamiya doesn't want me to spend half an hour assembling this thing in four separate parts like they've been doing with other parts of this plane unnecessarily complicated assemblies I mean it's all well and good it makes for a highly detailed kit but I still wonder sometimes where these engineers how they decide some pieces that you should assemble and other ones that you don't. Maybe real simple enough. These two halves go together. Just like so. Yes, so if you're watching me on Twitch, I know that so many of you watch me on YouTube, you don't really watch me live on Twitch, but the opportunity's there. You can watch me live. And then you can talk to me, just like Make a Boy did. Okay, I'm just gonna do this. Doink. Gives me something to hold on to so that I'm not painting my hand. It's gonna be regular gunmetal. So that's gonna be the TS-38. some color onto that. Okay, there's our first coat. Okay. We'll let that sit for a little bit dry a little bit and these are dry but I want to do another coat on them just to make sure they got good coverage all right a couple of little spurts of paint and those are done so again I'm gonna to have to let those dry a little bit now so yeah in the meantime, while that's drying, let's just move on to something else. Um, I have things like elevators. Not elevators. These are control surfaces, people like to call them. The Tamiya ones, they need to assemble three parts. So we have this one actually is stamped with an R that tells us it goes on the right side of the plane. And that's really nice and handy when you're trying to figure out which side these go on. Now, if you try and put it wrong, this doesn't fit. In fact, Tamiya has done something really nice. If you look at the hole patterns on our left to right, okay, the hole patterns on this one are more narrow. Let's see, it would go right there. So this one's a wider pattern, so it only goes on one side. So, you can't get it wrong. There you go. Now you could try and put it on this way, but you find that it just doesn't want to line up. And obviously I had it on here, because this actually acts like a little spacer in there. Okay, if I try and put this on the wing, as it sits, it's going to wind up not lining up. See that big hole? There's a big hole in there. I'll move my shirt. There you go. See? See that big gap? 
and that takes the place this thing actually takes place in that gap so what I'll do is my glue glue this in first and that's nice and happy to sit there Then this goes on. Now I don't have this painted white yet. I haven't done the underside. So right now it's just in its primer state. It's just got primer on there. I got no white paint on there. I still have to paint this white. But there we go. And now if I put that in there, you'll see those little fins line up, and now there's no gap. And it lines up perfectly, just like that. So let's grab the pieces of our other one right here. Done the same on this, it lines up and goes like that. this guy in first so he's all happy in his home See, here's the Academy ones. Of course, they're just white on both sides because the the Navy plane that we're building is the I'm doing the Jolly Rogers guy, um, and they've got white on their fins. It's going to sit like that, roughly something like that. See, they don't have the little tabs that to me a kit has. They just kind of fit in a little channel here. I turn this up like this. See that channel? They just kind of fit in there. It's like this. And you kind of, you can sit them however you want. If you want them to sit level, you can glue them level, like so. Or, any, literally, any angle you want. I'm, I'm gonna be, having this plane in its kind of parked position so I think having them down is going to be a good option especially because I'm going to have the wing tips um, elevated up like this which now that I look at them I still have to paint them it's clearly a different color right this is just in primer I've got the white underneath them but I got to do the actual color on that side still So that's yet to come. Still have to work on that. These, however, these I'm to me it gives you the option of when you put in these tabs, you have tabs that make them flat straight and tabs that make them down. And I chose straight. I chose straight for mine. That's just the way I did it. These ones are gonna be straight. I know so many model kits, everybody puts the flaps down um, this particular kit I decided flaps up they don't need to be down I could have them just kind of hang just a little bit to show they actually are a separate part I could do that and I believe I'm gonna glue them in now so I'm just gonna glue them on the tabs I think that's going to be secure enough. I don't want to do too much glue. So I don't want it squeezing out the top. It squeezes out the bottom, I don't mind so much. I 
happens. Yeah, so just not just not quite perfect. I like things not quite perfect. <laughs> In case you haven't noticed with the uh, the tail fin for the Academy kit and making it so it's just a little skewed. doing the same with these little fins. Just not quite perfect. And it gives it a little realism, at least in my mind. I did, if you have, if you notice sitting here, this is the fully painted and finished tail fin for the Academy kit. Got the yellow on there. I did put, lay down some red first, and then some Tamiya I believe they call it chrome yellow, just out of the can, um, to match the color of the decals that come with the that I bought for the Jolly Rogers. Um, so it's not quite such a bright yellow. I laid down some red first to give it a little bit of a darker yellow. As you could tell just by looking at, compare it to the masking tape, it's a little bit darker yellow. It's not orange, but it's definitely not a straight bright yellow either. So, yeah. Okay, so now I've got control surfaces on that plane. I think I'm going to wait for the Academy kit because I have a feeling as I'm doing things around that kit, I'm probably going to be pressing on those, these flaps at times that I don't want to and I'm probably going to break off. And then I'll re-glue, and then I'll have to re-glue, and then I'll have to re-glue, and I don't want to be dealing with that. Okay, my arrestor hook is ready for a second coat of paint. These are dry, so I can put those on. So, let's just paint that again. Two coats on that. We're going to let that dry. Put that back over here. Okay, let's get these off of here. That's number 20. Okay. So 20 is on the book. And 20 goes on the... I'm going to call it the left side. You know... I work around cars so much in my life. I wanted, I wanted to say, it's on the driver's side. But we all know this is an airplane. There's no driver's side of the airplane. Is that port? Is the left side port or is that starboard? I don't know. I honestly don't know. So they're saying don't glue these. So remember, long time ago now, we got a couple of poly caps that went got pressed in there. So we want to have the larger side pointing forward, and I guess we're just supposed to press them in there. And that's it. And so we just do that. Here, let me change the camera again. Sorry about that. So this is just going to press into that little hole and just sit there. And I guess that allows this to rotate. Uh -huh, yeah, that's cool. It rotates with it. I actually got a lot more movement on this than I thought we would. But that's pretty cool. Not bad. That's a lot more movement than we're going to get on the Academy kit, that's for sure. How do I know? Well, here's the Academy one that just has a tab for you to just press it in and you're done. Okay, so next step is our arrestor hook, which is tacky right now. It's kind of dry to the touch. If I were to hold it and press it, I'd put fingerprints in it, and I don't want that. So, we're going to wait. The engine's already done. 
let's flip her over. Now we're starting to work on landing gear. And you know, I hate working on landing gear to the end of the plane. You know, I really do. But we can start on it. Okay, we can get some of these pieces done because here we're now we're getting on wings and stuff like that. Let's put the wings on. Let's put our wings on. Wing tips are going to get glued in just like that and sit there just like that. Okay. Nothing too special about them. Nothing too complicated. Just like so. And I'm going to use a little thin. On that edge there. There isn't a huge contact point on this, and that's okay. So there we go. <laughs> I glued these in, and I really shouldn't have. I needed to paint them first. Let's see how good my glue is. Ah, perfect. Perfect. <laughs> I need to paint those first. See what happens when you do things and you're not prepared? So I'm going to do that. that and we're going to paint them. This got flat white TS27. That's what we're going to use. Shake that up good. Have a drink of Mountain Dew. Get all jacked up on Mountain Dew. First coat of white. Right there. First coat of white, right there. Okay. While that coat dries, we'll put this wing on. Now you might be able to see on the camera if I get the right light, you can see how you see how the like the dark green kind of have has, has a sheen on it and then the lighter green almost looks a little splotchy right that's the reaction I was telling you about that happened on my tail fins only to a much lesser extent and I've never had my clear coat react to the paint like that before so the only thing I could think of as to why it might have done that is I might have had some oil residue left over from the AK Interactive putty that I used to mask it off. That's the only thing I could think of that might be have a, be an explanation as to why it did that. Because I got no other explanation why it would have reacted like that. Okay, wingtips are in. Ta-da! There we go. Wingtips are done. Okay, time for another coat. Now to get these to match the bottom of the plane, I'm going to need a good four coats on these. Right? They might look pretty white to you on the camera there. Until I match it up with the bottom of the plane. 
Actually, two coats looks pretty good, but it's not quite the same. You see, it is a shade different. It's just a little shade different, right? It takes like a good four or five coats to actually get that to match. Okay, so let's start assembling some of our landing gear pieces. I'm not gonna be putting it on yet, as you can see all this stuff here. Um, so we've got some bay doors. I'm gonna put those halves together. I'm not really going to do any of this stuff where it's all got to be sticking out of the plane like that. I could put these little guys on, right? They just kind of slot in. Um, I can assemble the front door here and get this thing ready to go on. Maybe I've got those already put on the plane because I had to do that um, before painting it all. Um, I think I already put that on there. I'm not sure what that's just the other side for this one I've already done those so yeah we just do a little bit of assembly on the doors and get those put together in the meantime keep on putting more coats of paint on so where's my I have my landing gear door sprues right here so off of our pea tree dish um, P21, 22, and 23, and 20. That's going to be these four guys right here. Already pre-painted on the sprues. All ready to go. And to me, it actually calls for a couple of decals to go on them. Which I also pre-installed. So, let's get all our nubs cleaned up off of these. It is a little bit ironic, you know, you paint these things white, and then you wind up weathering them to the point that they're gray again. This side, I'm going to match up this like that, just like that. Those done. I'm gonna do another coat of paint on my little doors here. Not doors, flaps. Each coat getting a little bit wider. Now I'm making sure that I'm not getting any overspray wrapping around onto the top, right? That's very important. Okay, so we've got our bottom now here. Um, we've got to get N17, so that's not on this tree. It's off our N tree. N is right here, I believe. Yes. So, 17 is our main door. Yeah. 
and then we're going to need 19, that's this guy here, and we want 14, this guy here, okay, and then we want J6 and Q6. Q6, you're not white. You need to be white, dude. Q6 needs to be white. I have a piece here. This guy, Q number one, I recognize from the tail fin area. That's going to have to be painted. I just don't know what color yet. But I'm going to have to put a couple more coats of paint on this because this is white. This little fin has to go on there. So, yeah, so that's that. I'll let that dry. What else did I need? I need a J6. Where's my J? J might be clear. J might be clear. Let's take a look. Yes. J six. This little guy here. And they want him painted silver. Why mold him in clear if you want it silver? That doesn't make sense to me. Why make this clear if it's supposed to be silver? I really don't know. Anyway. Clean this up. Now it's supposed to go down right there on that little circular part in a certain way. Just like that. I still don't understand why they want that silver. Why do they want that silver? Okay. So that's there. Then this is going to go. It looks like it goes right over top of it all. It goes over top. Just like that. Oh, I see. It's supposed to be a light. Why silver? I don't know. But, but anyway, in any case, that's what we got. Finally, we have this little guy. These little nubs that we need to get rid of. Those two little things, they disappear. And then he's going to go on the leading edge.
right there. Looks like I've got a nub I need to clean in order for him to fit in properly. His little arms are very delicate, so you gotta be careful. Manipulating them. This goes on right there. He does fit in very tight and very nice. Sits into that, his little slot there perfectly. Here's our front door. Okay, more paint. Q6 needed to be white. And he's white now. Okay, that's done. He's once he's dry, he's gonna be ready. Another coat on these is needed. That'll be the last coat on these two. Especially this one. I've got the paint thick enough it almost took the panel, the, the line away that separates the two pieces. You can't even really see it on the camera anymore. This one you can probably still see. There's that line. You can still see it. You can still see the panel line. This one you can't even see anymore. The paint's a little too thick. But that's what happens when you need so many coats to get the coverage you need, right? Sometimes that's, that's what it takes to get the coverage, especially with white, right? Okay, we'll still let this dry for another minute or two while we deal with our arrestor hook, because now he's nice and dry. He's going to just slide into place. There's a nice big hole right there, right at the back. And in theory, he's just going to slide right in. That's theory, of course. Sometimes theory doesn't work. friggin' fit. Oh, it snapped in. <laughs> there we go. I don't even need to glue it. I'm going to, but I don't need to. Just for an extra added measure to give some stability to it. I don't want it accidentally getting caught on something at the back there. So I glued it at the back too. But there we go. A little bit of weathering and that back end of this plane will look really nice. I can see the line here again. The paint has settled down. It went and it settled. And I can see that line again now. I don't know if you can or not. Maybe barely catch the angle right. You might. No, maybe not. Oh well. <laughs> anyway. There's that one. 
and that one. One thing you can see on this one there's a little dot, there's a little imperfection um, right here. Right where I'm pointing to right there. There's a little dot. You see that little dot? It's just a, not quite right. It's just a little dot right there. No matter how many coats of white I put on there, that's not going to get rid of it. Why? Because there's something, maybe it could be it could be something very simply eating a meal at my desk while this is sitting off to the side and I don't know a little piece of little bit of oil from I don't know, it could be a, a piece of chicken <laughs> dropped on there and I didn't know and now that I've painted it, it's not going to cover on that spot no matter what I do. And that's the risk of not working in a dedicated workspace. But, do I, am I worried about that? No. Why not? Because it's on the underneath of the plane where there's going to be a whole lot of weathering going on underneath there. A whole lot of grease streaking and everything like that. You're never going to know. You're never going to know that I ate chicken beside my model. Honestly, I don't even know if it's chicken. <laughs> okay. Because I'm not actually assembling anything on the plane, except maybe our N30s. We'll put our N30 and 31s on. Okay, so where's my entry? Entry, entry, where are you? There you are. 30 and 31. That is these two right here. Now they're giving me options. They look like I've got three different ones. 30 and 31, or 33 and 34, or 32 and 35. Um, depending, obviously, on your particular one that you're doing, and where they're going on the actual wings. So, let's just move our pieces over here, out of the way. Uh, I still don't want to really do anything with these, so I'm going to move them over here till that paint cures in about maybe 10 minutes or so. So, looking at, if we flip our plane over, we're going to the back of the wings, and we're going right here besides the landing gear is where N31 and 30 are going to go. We've got one hole for each and they have one little peg. They actually have two pegs but I only have one hole drilled. That's okay. That's not the end of the world. That's what knives are made for. We can take pegs off Thirty and thirty-one. Okay. So we know it goes with the rounded side down. Let me change the camera again, sorry. The rounded side goes to the front. So that's the peg we're gonna line up. And the other peg that's on the bottom of this, we're gonna shave it off. Thing. Now, based, oh, we've got three pegs. There we go, let's get rid of the back one. Okay, that's all we need. We only need one peg. I'm going to do the same with this one. One peg, two peg. Okay. So now it's not going to matter which one I use. The question is going to be, are my holes big enough for the pegs? So we'll do a little test fit. And they're not quite. Not quite. Now, maybe when I first drilled them out, they were fine. But with all the painting and everything, um, whatever, all kinds of little variations could have happened. I feel a little bit of a burr on them too, so I'll just do that. Smoothing them out. There's probably a couple of holes that can use that little love to them. Let's see. 
how this fits now. Fits in there good. So, I'll just do that. Line it up and it's straight. I want to go straight back. That looks pretty good. Okay, next one. Go from this side. Fits in good. Line it up straight. That's where the, you know, other holes would have helped to line it up straight. But I don't have them. I don't have that guide. That's all right. So there we go. Those are in. Now I saw some other ones. N34 and 33. They go up front somewhere here, but we have no holes here. They show holes in the instructions, but I don't have them in my fuselage. So that tells me that I chose a specific version that doesn't have them. And that's all right. There's nothing wrong with that. I just don't put those on on this one. That's fine. They don't go on here. Now, if I did decide I wanted to put them on, I can shave the pegs off and just try and line them up where they're supposed to go. They do go somewhere. They go right around here. That's about where they go on each side. They look like these. Exactly. They look just like them, but they go here and here. There's end number three, which goes into these little slots. I think if I put them in now, I will wind up breaking them off. Um, I can almost guarantee that's what's going to happen. Down here, Q7 at the front, that little fin I've already put in. I put it in right there. Right, he's already there. The front main landing gear door is supposed to go in this slot. There's a slot here. You see that slot? There's a slot right here. See that little hole? That's where that little door, it's going to slide in. That's pretty good to me, I thank you. That makes that really easy to put in. <laughs> At least in theory. I don't know if it's supposed to actually slide all the way through in there or just touch. It feels like it wants to slide in, but it's going to have to. There we go. All the way in, just like that. <laughs> Look at that. But you know what's going to happen? This is going to get a lot of pressure put on it as I try and do other things. And so, this is staying off. Sorry. That's just the reality of it. Okay. Um, what else are we going to do here? Let's take a look. Let's flip this over. Flip this puppy over. Uh, we got some arms and stuff we can put on the main landing gear. Oh no, that's the nose landing gear. So, let's grab. They want decals to put on. We're gonna grab some stuff off of our A tree. Where's our A tree? Off of our A tree. A18 is our main piece. I haven't even weathered any of these pieces. 
Uh, let's see, A30 and 31. It's getting these guys all the way back here. We want A32 and 25. This tiny little guy. And they're all going to go together. So, let's put this aside. Let's clean up our nubs. Make sure everything's nice and clean. These guys are always the ones that have the tiny little nubs for like no reason. Why to me it puts extra little nubby things sticking off of them. I don't know. So, first thing we're going to do is take this in this position. Ah, they want this to be chrome. That's our little suspen our little suspension piece. I'm going to use my Molotov liquid chrome, or not Molotov, <laughs> Molotov. Sorry, Molotov. This stuff is the most chrome looking stuff I've ever seen. I'm going to try and put just a little dab on there. <laughs> kind of smeared around a little bit. Get a little too much. Like I said, I'm going to try and get a little dab on there. And I went and got a big dab on there. I know I've got a looking q-tip I can soak up a little bit of the excess okay now a 30 and 31 are going to go basically above and below this shock So they show us, this is A30, this is going to be the upper one, and they bend just a certain way. Let's see if I can get these lined up. <laughs> With all my extra paint on there, that's going to make things a bit of a challenge. This one sits in the little slot. And then they're going to meet. There's the little slot. And then they meet to 
together like that. And because they're meeting together, I can glue them together just like that. And there we go. Next, we have A25. That's this guy. He's going to go with his little canister facing up, and he's going to go into that little notch. He's got a little notch himself. Shows exactly where he's supposed to go. Just like that. Now, as long as you're not like me and get glue on your fingers, you'll have no problem getting him put in a spot properly. If you are like me and you get glue on your fingers, he's not going to want to sit in his home properly. But once you get him in there, he's happy to be in his home. And finally we have our other little piece, A32, this little guy here. As long as I don't drop him and lose him, he can go into his little slot, just just a little bit lower down right there. So in his case, I'm going to put glue on the peel apart so that I can just place him in it right there. Once again, it's one of those things where, Tamiya, why are you making me put this together like this? Clearly, you could have molded it together, and I wouldn't have had a problem. There we go. Now obviously there you gotta put your wheels on, but I don't have those even painted yet, so they are not ready. This is not ready for wheels. Or should I say the wheels are not ready for it? <laughs> Either way it works. We have our door for the front, that's on our R tree, R6 and 7. And it looks like we also have R4. R4 is the piece that actually broke off on me in the Academy kit. Because, you know, a month ago when Academy wanted me to assemble the thing, it was already in there. And of course broke off. And I've had it sitting there on top of a paint bottle all this time. So there's also R4, it, but it's going to go in there and act as the the hydraulic for this door. That's going to go in when I'm ready to put it in, and not a moment too soon. Okay, we have this piece sticking out the side here. Am I supposed to leave that? It kind of shows it, but it kind of doesn't. Oh, okay, it's another piece. It's supposed to slide into a hole that's inside on the uh, bottom of the fuselage. Wow, Tamiya, you and your engineering thinking ahead. Okay, I'm going to get this one assembled, and then I think this is where I'm going to call it a day. This piece is going to get glued on to this piece. Is it like that? Nope. It's like this. There's a little pin and a hole for it to line up. That's where it lines up, just like that. 
cape. I will say there's not a lot of kits out there that make you assemble both the exterior and interior of a landing landing bay door. Right? There are not a lot of kits out there that make you put the two halves of a door, the inner skin and the outer skin, and assemble them. That's usually one molded piece like that. I don't remember. I'd have to watch my videos on the uh, 132nd scale, the uh, F4J, um, to see whether I had to actually put the two halves together like that on the bay doors. Because I don't remember, but this might be one of the first times I've ever had to do that. Yeah. Okay. This is pretty much going to be it for today. Um, I'm going to glue my... Now that this is dry, I'm going to glue them back in, just like I had them before. <laughs> before I decided, hey, I should paint them. This was this side. Okay, again, just hanging down just a little hair. Looks like I had a little too much glue on the bottom there, that's okay. And then this one. Down just a little bit. Going. There we go. Okay, so they're in, and that's done. And that's where I'm gonna say we're done for the day. So, you guys who haven't subscribed already, hit that subscribe button. Um, I know on my YouTube channel there's a subscribe button down over in that corner there, or right down there, like way, way, way down there. There's a little red subscribe button. Otherwise, you can just go in the comments and check out says where it says subscribe hit subscribe like everybody else does and uh, head over to my twitch and subscribe to me on there and check out my Instagram and uh, I, I don't know I don't care if you subscribe to me on my Instagram but you can see all my still pictures I take pictures of everything that I built and uh, once they're complete and I upload it on onto my Instagram so you can check me out there if you like and other than that that's gonna be it for today and uh, yeah, we'll get working on some of the Academy kit next time and kind of get some of its parts put together. And uh, yeah, we're coming along. We're getting there. It's a slow process, obviously, but we're getting there. It's starting to look like an airplane now. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to call it a day. Thank you guys for watching and thanks for coming out. And uh, yeah, that's going to be about it. So... I guess I will see you all in the next one.